Good day and welcome back. Today we are going to talk a little bit about saddles. And I say a little bit because even if you know a lot about saddles, you still only know a little bit because there's just so much to know. And uh, depending on where you are in the world, uh, the saddles that you're going to be exposed to are going to be different. So, I mean, there's lots of saddles I have never, ever seen. I've heard about. I've seen pictures of a few. Um, but in real life, I haven't seen that many. And the ones I am actually the most familiar with is Western saddles. So I probably will talk a little bit more about them than some of the other ones. But I'm going to talk about saddles because if you don't get at least a little bit of information about saddles before you go out and buy one, it can be a very expensive lesson. And I know because I've learned that lesson the hard way. I've uh, spent an awful lot of money on saddles. Even the ones that I have right now have not been cheap. Well, the one is, but the other one actually has been a little more expensive, but we'll get into that. But uh, I'm going to give you a little tour, and some of the saddles that we're going to talk about are Western saddles, Aussie saddles, Australian stock saddles. Well, I'll talk about that. I won't show you one, but I'm going to show you some Aussie saddles and uh, maybe even some English saddles, too. And uh, I don't know a lot about English saddles, even though that was actually the first saddle I ever rode was an English saddle. I don't really know a lot about them. My preference uh, for personal reasons has always been towards the Western saddle. Now, depending on your discipline, well, maybe I should back up a little. See, one of the reasons that I want to do this video is to give you a little bit of a you know, heads up on things you can look for in a saddle before you go out and buy one, because there's a lot of things that will determine what you want in a saddle and why you want a particular type of saddle. And, well, the information I'm going to provide, of course, is going to be based on the saddles that I personally have been exposed to, that I know a little bit about, and some of their form and function. And, uh, well, I, I discourage people from running out and buying a saddle before they get a horse. Absolutely. Because one of the more important things is that your saddle, regardless of what type of saddle it is, it has to fit the horse. And you can't get a saddle that properly fits your horse until you've got the horse. So don't think that you have to have all the tack before you get your horse. Get the horse first. Then you can make sure that the tack that you get fits properly. Very important. Now, uh, some of the determining factors... Uh, aside from your horse itself, which is one of the more important ones, uh, is your discipline, what you personally want in a saddle, what you're going to be doing with it, the features that you require. There's going to be a lot of variations in that, and we're going to talk about a few of them. I'm sure I'm going to leave a lot of them out because there's just so many things to talk about that I couldn't, I mean, even if I did a two-hour video, uh, I'd probably still just be scratching the surface and I'd probably run out of things to talk about because I, I don't really know enough about saddles to be able to give you an in-depth amount of information. And I think even people that know a lot about saddles really and they're only touching the tip of the iceberg. Um, no, you know, nothing to discredit them. I mean, even saddle makers, um, I don't think they really know that much about saddles. They might know their own saddles, the ones that they're making, quite well. And they might know a lot about some of the features that they incorporate into their various models that they have and stuff like that, how they work, that sort of thing. But I think it, it, overall, uh, there is just so much out there. Uh, no one person can know anything. Well, <laughs> know everything. Even knowing anything is pretty tough. Anyhow, we'll get to that. Uh, let me uh, show you around. We're in the tack room today because we've got quite a few saddles in here. And this is just one of the tack rooms. We actually have more than one here. But I think there's enough variation in saddles here, that, uh, including my own two, that I can show you a little bit about them. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of saddles. And even within each basic category with the Western saddle, the English saddle, the Aussie saddle, the Australian stock saddle, and goodness knows how many other kinds of saddles there are out there in the world that I don't have a clue about. Um, I'm going to give you a quick little view. Uh, they all have their pros and cons. Uh, this here that you're looking at right now, this is an English saddle. And uh, one of the things about English saddles is they're very light. 
So if you got uh, issues with upper body strength, that sort of thing, these are wonderful saddles. Uh, they're also devoid of a horn or cantle in the front uh, for you to hurt yourself on if you should land in properly on jumps. Very good for jumping. Uh, most people doing dressage and uh, a few other events um, would actually prefer the English style saddle. Uh, another one of the advantages of the English saddle is uh, the way the stirrups work is they have what they call them irons not stirrups and you when you're putting the saddle on the horse you can just slide it up the leather and then cock it like that and it stays up out of the way while you're putting the saddle on the horse which means it's actually a lot easier to get the saddle on and off the horse too uh, one of the one of the many uh, benefits of an english saddle uh, by nature of their design on many of them not all because there's a lot of variations in them uh, even within the English saddle, uh, there's close contact saddles, flex tree saddles, there's dressage saddles, there's jumping saddles, show saddles, blah, 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 many kinds. And even underneath, uh, the structure of them varies a lot, and uh, the angle and width of the gullet can vary. Uh, there's actually Arabian tree saddles as well for English saddles. And... Uh, this padding is a little different on this one. This one has some fairly substantial padding down the front. On some saddles I've seen, they don't have that, but they have fairly large pads running down here inside the saddle, which actually is, makes it a lot easier to fit on a variety of horses. So uh, English saddles, a lot of variety in them. Uh, I don't know a lot about them, so I can't really give you a great in-depth uh, as to what you need but there are in fact quite a few different kinds that much I do know and uh, so that, that's a little bit about them like I said you know one of the main advantages of them is their weight they are incredibly light and uh, because of how some of them are designed uh, they're actually much easier to fit onto a horse than a western saddle oh one more quick note is uh, it's a little off topic, it's saddle pads, not saddles, but when you're using uh, different types of saddles, you actually use different types of saddle pads. You can actually use a Western saddle pad underneath an English saddle, but they actually do have saddle pads made specifically for English saddles. Uh, one of the features on them, this one is actually a little different again uh, than some I've seen, but one of the features you'll find on a lot of them is that they'll have a few extra straps on them that you can run your uh, stirrup leathers through and uh, there's actually places they can actually be attached to the saddle so that the saddle and the saddle pads stay together a little better uh, so and you know there, like I said there there are English there are pads designed specifically for English saddles uh, they're a little more rounded on the bottom designed to fit the shape of the fenders this one is a uh, it's kind of got those rounded long fenders on it um, Still a little bit different. Oh, that's another thing about saddles. Even the surface, uh, this one is more of a suede, so a rougher finish, which is a little stickier so you don't slide off your saddle as easily. Uh, that might be a bit of a benefit to some people. Okay, now we're just going to jump back to Western saddles here for a minute. Uh, the two you're looking at right now, these are mine. These are my own saddles. And you're thinking maybe, no, oh, they don't look much different. There's, you know, Western saddles, Western saddle. Well, no, actually, these two are quite different. Uh, this one on the right um, was actually manufactured by a company that is no longer in business. And uh, this particular saddle was probably not a very expensive one, even when it was new. Uh, the material that the tree is made out of, and for those of you that don't know what a tree is, there's actually underneath these saddles, uh, rigid structure that all this leather is attached to that is quite solid and that can be made out of a variety of materials too that's something else to consider and that will also determine uh, some of the price of the saddle uh, it can be made from plastic fiberglass wood rawhide combinations of materials uh, there's a lot of variety and the shape of it determines the shape of the saddle because the leather is simply attached to this structure underneath. And, uh, well, that's where these, two, one of the ways that these two saddles are different is the tree on them is actually different. Uh, aside from the fact you'll notice the shape on the front is different on both of them. 
That's not that important, but what is different is the angle and shape of the bars, which is this part coming down, is different on these two saddles. The angle's different. Uh, this one is actually what's called an Arabian tree saddle. The tree has actually got a slightly different angle, lower angle, and it's got a slight curve to it. It's a little bit shorter. It's actually designed to fit the back of an Arabian horse. It also will fit a few other horses too. But uh, a few other things you want to look at too, consider is, uh, you know, like I said, this one, uh, even when it was new, was this is an older saddle, but it probably wasn't a very expensive one, even new. And uh, it has a few things on it that I don't even know why they're there because uh, one of the things that a lot of people like to use is the rear cinch. Now, unless you're roping, I don't think it's necessary. So if you don't have one, don't worry about it. Uh, a lot of people like it, but this one here, I don't know if you can even see them, but uh, they've got these little tabs on the back, apparently, about where a rear cinch would go. I have no idea why they're here. I actually stuck my finger through one, gave it a good pull. It started to tear. There's no way you're going to put a rear cinch on this saddle. Don't know why those things are even there. Uh, this saddle is not a particularly high quality saddle. New, a saddle like this, probably going to cost you about $500, $600, something like that. It's not horrible. Fits the horse not bad. Fits me not bad. Those are the main features I need and, uh, for starting horses if I have to drop it on the ground in a hurry or something like that. I don't worry about it. Now this one here, uh, quite a bit more expensive saddle. A uh, company that is still in business. And uh, the quality of this saddle is, is very clearly superior to that one in many ways. Uh, even things like the saddle strings, uh, much larger, thicker material. Uh, all the leather that the saddle is made out of is thicker and stronger. It's molded nicer. It's got better shape to it. Uh, just overall, the quality of work in this saddle is far superior. Those are things you can watch for when you're buying a saddle. Uh, you'll also notice, even though this does not have a rear cinch, there is some reinforced slots in the back here to put them in that you can attach a rear cinch to on the skirt. Uh, quite substantial. That skirt there is actually double layered. Plus, it's got the metal reinforcing around it. So uh, that's a that's a decent saddle. And uh, like I said, you know, even though the you know, they look like they're both Western saddles. No, they're not. They're actually quite different. Uh, there's a lot of things different in the dimensions of them. And at a glance, you'll probably never notice. But if you go in depth a little bit into them, there actually is some differences in these saddles. And when it comes to Western saddles, and having said, I'm going to talk a little bit more about them because I know a little bit more about Western saddles. Uh, if you choose to go to a Western saddle, which I like because I think they're a little more practical with all these strings on them uh, and, you know, there's little eyelets and stuff. There's, there's places you can hook stuff on, you can hang stuff on the horn, you can tie your jacket down behind. Uh, there's all kinds of, they're very functional. You can carry a lot of stuff on these saddles, whereas the English saddle that I just showed you doesn't have any of that stuff. And... Uh, but there's a lot of different features. There's a lot of different styles uh, when it comes to the Western saddles. Uh, never mind the different shapes, but even the different types of saddles, uh, different categories they have. There's uh, pleasure saddles, there's trail saddles, there's show saddles, there's barrel saddles, there's roping saddles, and probably a bunch of others that I don't even know about. Oh, I actually, I just discovered they actually make a specifically an endurance saddle in a Western style too. Um, I'll get to that in a minute uh, because I'm going to show you some Aussie saddles in a minute and uh, talk a little bit about them because they're actually quite uh, desirable for endurance riders, and I'll explain why. But when it comes to the Western saddles, if you're buying a Western saddle, um, features that you might want to look for is, uh, as you can see, this part here, the swell, or I don't know what you call it. It's got a few different names. This front part, it comes in different shapes. If that matters to you, uh, that might be an issue. Personally, I find this shape is actually a little bit more secure because you can actually hook your legs onto this part here. Keeps you in the saddle. This one, not so much. But then again, I wouldn't use this on a horse I'm starting that's liable to you know, require that. But other things, uh, like I said, with all the different uh, types of saddles, there are, there's a lot of features that are actually interchangeable on them, too. Uh, you can get different uh like I said, this this piece here, you can get that in a variety of shapes. The horn itself, the height and the diameter of it uh, comes in a variety, and you can actually order different horns 
for your desire on depending on the saddle that you got um particular on a roping saddle though typically a roping saddle will have a much larger diameter horn much more robust uh, it needs strength for wrapping that rope around after you rope yourself a steer a calf a, another horse whatever it is you're open and uh, usually you'll find on those ones there's been some rubber added to them as well so that when you wrap your rope around it doesn't slip as easy so uh, that's one of those things uh, show saddles uh, barrel saddles and then oh yeah I forgot there's trick saddles too we won't even get into them but uh, they often have a much skinnier horn on them these ones are kind of halfway in between um, like I said other features is if you use a rear cinch like I said some of them don't even have this there is no provision whatsoever for a rear cinch uh, most do have a provision for a uh, what's called a brass collar that goes on the front again unless you're going up and down steep inclines you don't really need one of those things all that bad not much not much need for them a lot of people use them uh, to me, it's just one more thing to do up that you don't really even need to have there, which is why I don't even own one anymore. I used to own one of my other saddles, but no longer do. Um, you can also have these. another difference between these two saddles. That's a shallow seat. This is a deep seat. And you'll notice that the back of the seat comes up quite a bit higher on this one, which actually makes the saddle look quite different on the horse. It makes it look a lot taller and bigger. And that's why I, if you look at one of my other videos where I had this saddle on one of my horses, it looks way too big for her. That's another reason it looks too big is because of the high back. It makes the saddle look a lot bigger. That will give you a little more comfort and a little more security. However, uh, there is a downside to that. If you do need to get out of the saddle in a hurry, hopefully you'll never have to do that. But if you do, uh, it's a little easier to get out of a shallow seat than a deep seat. Deep seat you can get caught in and, uh, well... You run into problems. Uh, another feature you'll notice on this saddle is it has a rounded skirt on the back. Now that is a typical trait of an Arabian saddle, although not all of them do, but most of them do. Uh, this one happens to, but that's not exclusive to Arabian saddles. If you see that feature, it may not actually be an Arabian saddle. Uh, barrel saddles frequently have that feature as a weight reduction uh, for barrel racing. Uh, saddle weight is a considerable, uh, well, a great consideration. It's something they're concerned about. They want light saddles, which makes me wonder why they even bother using Western saddles in the first place, but uh, they do. They're popular, and the Western saddle is frequently uh, used in barrel racing and there is a barrel racing model although again uh, there are so many features that are interchangeable between saddles as far as uh, seat depth horn size uh, the type of stirrups you got uh, the, the amount of material and fender on them uh, the fender is this part coming down the side to your stirrup uh, you know that there's so many variations that uh, you know you can take just about any saddle you want and customize it to your liking with various features from and looking at the saddle it's pretty hard to tell is that a pleasure saddle is that a trail saddle is that a roping saddle is that a barrel saddle is well you get my point but these are all features that you know you'll want to consider when you are looking for a saddle and again like i said the most important was you want that saddle to fit your horse properly uh, you also want the saddle to fit you fairly well as and uh, i discovered I thought, my first saddle, I thought, well, there's no way I'm that size. I've got to be bigger than that. I'm a guy. I'm a pretty big guy. Well, it turned out I didn't need a saddle that big. My backside actually isn't all that big. Uh, ladies tend to have a bigger backside and actually do require a bigger seat. And they measure, and this is a, another thing, is the English saddles, the Aussie saddles, the West saddles, they all measure it from a different point in the front. Um, from the back of the seat to there uh, is an inch, you know, they'll say it's a 15 inch seat, 16 inch seat, whatever. Uh, that's for Western saddle. You happen to have an English saddle or an Aussie saddle, the measurements are probably going to be a little different. Uh, if you decide for whatever your reason, because of your discipline, that you want a certain type of saddle, um, find out how they're measured before you say what size you need, or you may end up buying something that's absolutely no good to you at all. Because uh, a smaller seat saddle, would be quite uncomfortable. I've tried one that was too small for me. I, I just, uh, reasons I won't go into it, I borrowed one one time and used it and uh, 
It was about one inch smaller than mine. I didn't think that would make much of a difference, but it actually did. One inch actually made quite a difference. I had another one that was one inch bigger. I didn't like that either. I felt loose and sloppy and it didn't feel very secure at all. If you get a saddle that fits you right, it'll feel much better. You'll feel more secure on it. And uh, that's one of the, uh, another one of the reasons that I prefer a Western saddle, a lot of people do, is they are much more secure than the English saddle uh, because of their shape and design. They hold you in a lot better. And, uh, well, one of the nicknames for the English saddle is an ejection seat. Uh, for good reason. There's not a whole lot there to keep you in. Now, uh, again, Western saddles, uh, your saddle pad, a little bit different style. Uh, these two are both the same make, uh, same style, just a different thickness. But other than that, they're same, pretty much the same. But they're both Western, and they, will, they can be used under virtually any Western saddle, as long as it fits your horse proper in the first place. We're going to move along now, and uh, maybe we'll go take a look at some Aussie saddles. that is quite solid and that can be made out of a variety of materials too that's something else to consider and that will also determine uh, some of the price of the saddle uh, it can be made from plastic fiberglass wood rawhide combinations of materials uh, there's a lot of variety and the shape of it determines the shape of the saddle because the leather is simply attached to this structure underneath and uh, well that's where these, one of the ways that these two saddles are different is the tree on them is actually different. Uh, aside from the fact you'll notice the shape on the front is different on both of them. That's not that important, but what is different is the angle and shape of the bars, which is this part coming down, is different on these two saddles. The angle's different. Uh, this one is actually what's called an Arabian tree saddle. The tree has actually got a slightly different angle, lower angle, and it's got a slight curve to it. It's a little bit shorter. It's actually designed to fit the back of an Arabian horse. It also will fit a few other horses too. But uh, a few other things you want to look at too, consider is, uh, you know, like I said, this one, uh, even when it was new, was this is an older saddle, but it probably wasn't a very expensive one even new. And uh, it has a few things on it that I don't even know why they're there because uh, one of the things that a lot of people like to use is the rear cinch. Now, unless you're roping, I don't think it's necessary. So if you don't have one, don't worry about it. Uh, a lot of people like it. But this one here, I don't know if you can even see them, but uh, they've got these little tabs on the back apparently about where a rear cinch would go i have no idea why they're here i actually stuck my finger through one gave it a good pull it started to tear there's no way you're going to put a rear cinch on this saddle don't know why those things are even there uh, this saddle is not a particularly high quality saddle new a saddle like this probably going to cost you about 500 600 dollars something like that it's not horrible fits the horse not bad fits me not bad those are the main features i need and uh for starting horses if i have to drop it on the ground in a hurry or something like that i don't worry about it now this one here uh quite a bit more expensive saddle uh company that is still in business and uh, the quality of this saddle is is very clearly superior to that one in many ways. Uh, even things like the saddle strings, uh, much larger, thicker material. Uh, all the leather that the saddle is made out of is thicker and stronger. It's molded nicer. It's got better shape to it. Uh, just overall, the quality of work in this saddle is far superior. Those are things you can watch for when you're buying a saddle. Uh, you'll also notice, even though this does not have a rear cinch, there is some reinforced slots in the back here to put them in that you can attach a rear cinch to on the skirt. Uh, quite substantial. That skirt there is actually double layered, plus it's got the metal reinforcing around it. So uh, that's a that's a decent saddle. And uh, like I said, you know, even though the you know, they look like they're both Western saddles. No, they're not. They're actually quite different. Uh, there's a lot of things different in the dimensions of them. And at a glance, you'll probably never notice. But if you go in depth a little bit into them, there actually is some differences in these saddles. And when it comes to Western saddles, and having said, I'm going to talk a little bit more about them because I know a little bit more about Western saddles. 
Uh, if you choose to go to a Western saddle, which I like because I think they're a little more practical with all these strings on them uh, and, you know, there's little eyelets and stuff. There's, there's places you can hook stuff on. You can hang stuff on the horn. You can tie your jacket down behind. Uh, there's all kinds. Of, they're very functional. You can carry a lot of stuff on these saddles, whereas the English saddle that I just showed you doesn't have any of that stuff. And... Uh, but there's a lot of different features. There's a lot of different styles. Uh, when it comes to the Western saddles, uh, never mind the different shapes, but even the different types of saddles, uh, different categories they have, there's uh, pleasure saddles, there's trail saddles, there's show saddles, there's barrel saddles, there's roping saddles, and probably a bunch of others that I don't even know about. Oh, I actually, I just discovered they actually make a specifically an endurance saddle in a Western style too. Um, I'll get to that in a minute uh, because I'm going to show you some Aussie saddles in a minute and uh, talk a little bit about them because they're actually quite uh, desirable for endurance riders, and I'll explain why. But when it comes to the Western saddles, if you're buying a Western saddle, um, features that you might want to look for is, uh, as you can see, this part here, the swell, or I don't know what you call it. It's got a few different names. This front part, it comes in different shapes. If that matters to you, uh, that might be an issue. Personally, I find this shape is actually a little bit more secure because you can actually hook your legs onto this part here. Keeps you in the saddle. This one, not so much. But then again, I wouldn't use this on a horse I'm starting that's liable to you know, require that. But other things, uh, like I said, with all the different uh, types of saddles there are, there's a lot of features that are actually interchangeable on them too. Uh, you can get different uh like I said, this this piece here, you can get that in a variety of shapes. The horn itself, the height and the diameter of it uh, comes in a variety, and you can actually order different horns for your desire, on depending on the saddle that you got. Um, particular, on a roping saddle, though, typically a roping saddle will have a much larger diameter horn, much more robust. Uh, it needs strength for wrapping that rope around after you rope yourself a steer, a calf, a, another horse, whatever it is you're roping. And uh, usually you'll find on those ones there's been some rubber added to them as well so that when you wrap your rope around it doesn't slip as easy. So uh, that's one of those things. Uh, show saddles, uh, barrel saddles, and then, oh yeah, I forgot there's trick saddles too. We won't even get into them. But uh, they often have a much skinnier horn on them. These ones are kind of halfway in between. Um, like I said, other features is if you use a rear cinch. Like I said, some of them don't even have this. There is no provision whatsoever for a rear cinch. Uh, most do have a provision for a uh, what's called a brass collar that goes on the front. Again, unless you're going up and down steep inclines, you don't really need one of those things all that bad. Not much, not much need for them. A lot of people use them. Uh, to me, it's just one more thing to do up that you don't really even need to have there, which is why I don't even own one anymore. I used to on one of my other saddles, but no longer do. Um, you can also have these. another difference between these two saddles. That's a shallow seat. This is a deep seat. And you'll notice that the back of the seat comes up quite a bit higher on this one, which actually makes the saddle look quite different on the horse. It makes it look a lot taller and bigger. And that's why I, if you look at one of my other videos where I had this saddle on one of my horses, it looks way too big for her. That's another reason it looks too big is because of the high back. It makes the saddle look a lot bigger. That will give you a little more comfort and a little more security. However, uh, there is a downside to that. If you do need to get out of the saddle in a hurry, hopefully you'll never have to do that. But if you do, uh, it's a little easier to get out of a shallow seat than a deep seat. Deep seat you can get caught in and, uh, well... You run into problems. Uh, another feature you'll notice on this saddle is it has a rounded skirt on the back. Now that is a typical trait of an Arabian saddle, although not all of them do, but most of them do. Uh, this one happens to, but that's not exclusive to Arabian saddles. If you see that feature, it may not actually be an Arabian saddle. Uh, barrel saddles frequently have that feature as a weight reduction. Uh, for barrel racing, uh, saddle weight is a considerable, uh, well, a great consideration. It's something they're concerned about. They want light saddles, which makes me wonder why they even bother using Western saddles in the first place, but... Uh, they do, they're popular, and the Western saddle is frequently uh, 
used in barrel racing and there is a barrel racing model. Although, again, uh, there are so many features that are interchangeable between saddles as far as uh, seat depth, horn size, uh, the type of stirrups you got, uh, the, the amount of material and fender on them. Uh, the fender is this part coming down the side to your stirrup. Uh, you know, that, there's so many variations that, uh, you know, you can take just about any saddle you want and customize it to your liking with various features from, and looking at the saddle, it's pretty hard to tell. Is that a pleasure saddle? Is that a trail saddle? Is that a roping saddle? Is that a barrel saddle? Is, well, you get my point. But these are all features that you know, you'll want to consider when you are looking for a saddle. And again, like I said, the most important was you want that saddle to fit your horse properly. Uh, you also want the saddle to fit you fairly well. As, and uh, I discovered, I thought, my first saddle, I thought, well, there's no way I'm that size. I've got to be bigger than that. I'm a guy. I'm a pretty big guy. Well, it turned out I didn't need a saddle that big. My backside actually isn't all that big. Uh, ladies tend to have a bigger backside and actually do require a bigger seat. And they measure, and this is a, another thing, is the English saddles, the Aussie saddles, the West saddles, they all measure it from a different point in the front. Uh, from the back of the seat there uh, is an inch, the, you know, they'll say it's a 15-inch seat, 16-inch seat, whatever. Uh, that's for Western saddle. You happen to have an English saddle or an Aussie saddle, the measurements are probably going to be a little different. Uh, if you decide for whatever your reason, because of your discipline, that you want a certain type of saddle, um, find out how they're measured before you say what size you need, or you may end up buying something that's absolutely no good to you at all. Because uh, a smaller seat saddle would be quite uncomfortable. I've tried one that was too small for me. I, I just, uh, reasons I won't go into it, I borrowed one one time and used it, and uh, it was about one inch smaller than mine. I didn't think that would make much of a difference, but it actually did. One inch actually made quite a difference. I had another one that was one inch bigger. I didn't like that either. I felt loose and sloppy and didn't feel very secure at all. If you get a saddle that fits you right, it'll feel much better. You'll feel more secure on it. And uh, that's one of the, uh, another one of the reasons that I prefer a Western saddle, a lot of people do, is they are much more secure than the English saddle uh, because of their shape and design. They hold you in a lot better. And, uh, well, one of the nicknames for the English saddle is an ejection seat. Uh, for good reason. There's not a whole lot there to keep you in. Now, uh, again, Western saddles, uh, your saddle pad, a little bit different style. Uh, these two are both the same make, uh, same style, just a different thickness. But other than that, they're the same, pretty much the same. But they're both Western, and they, will, they can be used under virtually any Western saddle, as long as it fits your horse proper in the first place. We're going to move along now and uh, maybe we'll take a look at some Aussie saddles. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about Aussie saddles. And their name is actually rather misleading because um, these saddles don't exist in Australia. So they're uh, kind of, it's kind of a misleading name that they have. But this particular style of saddle is actually predominant to North America. Uh, Maybe available in other parts of the world, I'm not sure, but it is... Well, the Aussie saddle typically is a combination of a Western and English saddle. Uh, it is also loosely based on the Australian stock saddle. But one of the features that is, and it, this is optional too, by the way, I, I'm going to start off, this horn and these buck rolls are optional on an Aussie saddle. And if you look at an Australian stock saddles, uh, you don't find them with a horn. Occasionally you'll find them with buck rolls, but you, uh, I personally have never seen a, so much as a picture of one with a horn on it. How they do roping, I'm not quite sure, but uh, Australian stock saddles uh, do not have horns. This is something that for some reason North Americans like their horn on a saddle, so they come up with this thing called an Aussie saddle that is kind of a mixture between uh, an English and a Western saddle, and... Uh, for the most part, it's actually got a lot of the best features of both. It's only one thing about them that I don't care for. But, uh, well, let's take a look at it and talk about some of the things. Now, uh, this piece right here uh, is called a buck roll. Occasionally, you will find them on Western saddles, too. Usually, they're a little lower down, though. Maybe not quite that big. But they basically give your leg something to 
press against and give you a little more security in the saddle. Now, one thing this one has that is rather unusual, I've never seen one of these before, is it actually has a buck roll behind the leg as well. I have no idea why. I can't see the benefit to it being there, but it's there. Uh, this one in particular, uh, I'm going to say one thing about Aussie saddles before you run out and buy one, is um, you, it's hard to find one of good quality. Uh, my experience, anyhow, they aren't, there's not a lot of them around, but I have actually found it rather hard to find one of any decent quality at all. I actually haven't seen one. This one here, this particular one, is actually one of the better ones I've seen. And even this one, looking at it, isn't all that great, but uh, certainly is a little better than the last one that I had personally. But I'm just going to talk about a couple of features about this one, because there's one thing about this particular saddle that I find very, very unique, very interesting, is... Uh, typically, most saddles on the underside, particularly Western saddles, have got you know some kind of a, a fleece. Uh, I, I'm guessing at one time it would have been uh, sheepskin. Uh, now it's usually a synthetic fabric. This one actually has felt attached to it on the underside. The underside of this saddle has actually got felt under it. And it's also got its padding in a very different configuration than uh, what I have seen in a lot of other Aussie saddles too. And uh, remember I was saying on the English saddles you can attach your saddle pad to the saddle. Well, this has that exact thing right there. You see these straps right here? This pad is attached to this saddle. They stay together as a single unit. Now I said it was a kind of a hybrid between an English and Western saddle. Uh, one of the things about the English saddles is the girth system. Uh, I don't care for them myself. Uh, depending on if you have a um, number of horses that you ride, substantially different in size, you may need more than one girth to get enough adjustment to get your saddle tight enough. That's one of my pet peeves of these things. Otherwise, I think they're actually not a bad idea. They actually got a lot of good features. Uh, again, they're not as light as an English saddle, but they're much lighter than most Western saddles. This particular one is actually fairly heavy uh, for an Aussie saddle, anyhow. But uh, again, it's got the, the stirrups are connected by straps to the saddle, uh, a little more like the English style, although these ones don't pull up like the English ones do, but uh, they do have a similar way of mounting. Uh, they're a little more flexible. They twist easier. Uh, you can just turn them around any way you want. Much lighter overall. And the fenders are shaped, you know, you've got that shape more like an English saddle. Uh, this one's actually double layer. It's a little heavier, a little better built, but it still seems to have, from what I can tell, synthetic fabric on the seat. Um, that's one thing I've noticed with most of the Aussie saddles I've seen is they're actually a combination of natural and synthetic fabrics. This particular one has been converted from an English girth to a Western cinch. Uh, there are actually kits you can buy, or if you happen to live somewhere where they have a, a store with buckles and D-rings and that sort of thing, you can make your own for a lot less. But uh, personally, I like this. You can get the saddle tighter, gives you more adjustment. You can use it on more horses. That's one of the benefits of these things. Uh, they pretty much all, at least any of the ones I've seen, have a fairly deep seat to them. Endurance riders like them because uh, A, they're lightweight, and B, they're usually fairly comfortable saddles if you've got to sit in this thing for quite a long time. I'm going to actually talk a little bit about the synthetic versus leather in a minute too. But I'm going to show you another Aussie saddle because right next to that one, there's an, underneath here, uh, there's another one I want to show you. Okay, here we have yet another variation of the Aussie saddle. And uh, this one's a little different yet again. Uh, it has different rings in the front. Uh, again, the buck rolls, a good feature. Uh, a little more sturdy of a horn, but still fairly thin. You aren't going to do any roping with this saddle, but it's handy for hanging things on, that sort of thing. Uh, has more of a suede seat, uh, no slip, a uh, little better. But this one, as you can see, it's got the fleece underneath, uh, which <laughs> is actually different, again, from some of the Aussie saddles I've seen. Uh, the one, some of the ones I've seen, they just had a, a, a long, fairly wide, thick pad running down each side of the spine uh, under the saddle. Uh, 
and are shaped somewhat more like uh, English saddle. This is actually more like a Western style saddle, but again, uh, much lighter in weight than a Western saddle. This one here is lighter than that one, uh, but actually I've seen them even lighter yet. And uh, I think that would probably depend on the type of padding and that, that they have underneath. But again, this one uses the typical English girth system, which is right here. Uh, it consists of a strap with buckles on the end. It's a little harder to get done up. This one has one extra strap on it. I'm not sure what that's for. And uh, apparently the buckle size is slightly different than the English ones. I'm not sure. I haven't really compared them. Uh, but you can actually go down and buy the buckles uh, this size that you can simply make loops out of your straps, come off the saddle and put D-rings in there and then put a western cinch on. It makes it much better for uh, tightening it up. Makes it a lot easier to tighten up, actually. Actually, I'll leave that over there for the moment. But uh, I just want to talk about a couple other features. This one actually has a, a quite a bit of synthetic on it. I think this one is pretty much all synthetic. Uh, instead of leather, this has got nylon. A lot of people do not like synthetic fabrics. Uh, depending on what you're doing with them, they're actually not bad. One of the benefits is, uh, of the synthetic stuff is it doesn't rot when it gets moisture, far less likely to break on you, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, there are some benefits. It's not all bad uh, if you happen to be riding in the rain or the snow and that sort of thing. Synthetic fabrics uh, are much more impervious to moisture. It, they, the downside is synthetic, though, and uh, I wasn't going to get into that until later, but uh, since we happen to run into a saddle here that's all synthetic, uh, most synthetic saddles, whether it's Western or whatever, generally are quite a bit lighter. So if weight is an issue for you, uh, that's an option. It's something to consider. The synthetic fabric uh, saddles are generally quite a bit lighter weight than the leather counterparts. Uh, personally, I don't care for the leather or for the synthetics. I like leather myself, but that's a personal choice, and uh, I'm not even going to bother getting into why. But except for one thing that I have noticed is, and unfortunately, even leather can do it a bit, but not as bad. Is uh, if you spend quite a bit of time in that saddle, uh, synthetic fabrics don't breathe, so you're probably going to end up with a very sweaty backside if it's warm. Uh, that's one thing you're going to notice a difference between the leather and the synthetic is the synthetic is going to make you sweat a lot more than the leather will. It doesn't breathe like leather does. That's one of the downsides to synthetic. However, one of the things I have found with the Aussie saddles is I have yet to see one that is of particularly high quality. Uh, some of the Australian stock saddles that I've seen, I haven't seen them in person. I've seen lots of pictures of them, and some of them are so nicely made, they just make you want to sit in them. Lovely craftsmanship, good materials, and I've heard a lot of people just rave about how great they are. Although, without that horn, I don't know how you're going to do much in the lines of roping, but uh, that horn is actually a little bit more robust than some. I've seen some that are even thinner yet, uh, the one that I used to own. Uh, the, the horn was actually a little bit higher and even smaller in diameter. There's no way you're going to tie anything on that thing. Uh, I was scared of breaking it, just hanging on to it. But I still like having it there. It's a nice feature to have. So um, we've shown you some English saddles. We've shown you some Western saddles. Aussie saddles, they call them. And you won't find them in Australia. Okay, just remember that. You will not find an Aussie saddle in Australia. I will talk a bit about the Australian stock saddle, though, because I think they are a very good saddle. They do, unfortunately, again, use the English girth system, which I'm not fond of. But other than that, they're marvelous saddles, very well crafted, uh, very well made, and uh, the quality and craftsmanship of the material is just far superior to any of these Aussie saddles you're ever going to find. So... Um, uh, but being that I don't have one here to show you, I can't really talk about them. Uh, they are very similar to this in style, uh, minus the horn. Uh, the buck rolls are yeah, similar. Sometimes they're up or down a little bit different, maybe a different shape or size. But then, you know, like I said, you know, with saddles, there's going to be variations in all of them. So that's a bit of a summary on saddles, and like I said, that's just barely touching the tip of the iceberg. I can't even possibly 
you know, like I said, it'd take at least a two-hour video to even begin to touch on uh, some of the things you need to know. Uh, I probably have skipped a lot of stuff. I, I, can't, I can't say for sure, but, uh, well, one of the things that you need to know is uh, you got to decide what you want in a saddle before you go out and buy one. Otherwise, you can make a huge mistake and spend a lot of money, end up with some very expensive lessons, and... Uh, that's not hard to do. So what you want to do is, well, first off, like I said, get the horse first. Make sure the saddle fits the horse. That's, that's extremely important, regardless of what type of saddle you get. Decide what you are going to do. Are you going to be pleasure, show, trail, jumping, barrels, gymkhana? Uh, the list goes on. There's lots of other things, but you got to decide what discipline you're going to go into because that is going to largely determine what type of saddle that you're going to need. Because, oh, for example, if you're jumping, you are definitely not going to want a Western saddle because they're generally quite heavy, some of them, which will inhibit the height that your horse can jump. And uh, God forbid you should ever land wrong on one of those things. It's going to hurt because there's an awful lot at the front that you can land on that you yeah, that's going to hurt. Trust me. Um, jumping, you're probably going to want an English saddle. Uh, endurance riding. One of the favorites for endurance riding is the uh, Aussie saddle. Uh, I would suspect an Australian stock saddle, if you're in Australia, would be excellent. Uh, some people will use an English saddle. Uh, they do actually make, although I haven't seen one, I've seen pictures of them. They'd make an in, a Western endurance saddle that is actually the only Western saddle I've ever seen that is devoid of a horn. It doesn't have a horn on it. I've never seen that before. It does still have a piece across the front that you can grab onto, so there's still something there for a handhold if you want, you want to put your hand down somewhere. That's one of the things I like about a horn. Uh, I seldom ever actually tie anything to them. I don't do any roping, but it's it's a very convenient place to rest your hands. Sometimes it's a nice place to hook your reins onto, stuff like that. Uh, if the horn is of importance to you, well, then you're going to be limiting yourself to either a Western or a Aussie saddle. English, Australian stock saddles, don't have them. Decide what you need, what you want, what you're going to do, what features you want, and then you can go looking for them. And uh, like I said, you know, compare saddles one to another. Don't just run out and buy a saddle, uh, you know, if at all possible, uh, particularly for your first saddle, uh, you know, until you learn a bit about saddles. Uh, definitely start with a used one that you can borrow and try on your horse and see how it fits without a saddle pad. That's the best way. Don't, because that saddle pad's really going to alter the fit. So make sure it fits your horse well. Uh, that's number one consideration and then does it have the features that you want uh, compare a few saddles side by side and you know compare the quality you know how thick is the leather a lot of that can be determined just by you know looking at the the thickness of the leather on the fenders and the skirting and the, uh, the stirrups and uh, well, there's a lot of places you can look and uh, you can notice the difference in quality and uh, you know well just to give you an idea it is actually possible to spend up to, well, I've heard even in excess of $10,000. You're also going to find saddles out there for, well, as low as, I think, three or $400 brand new. I wouldn't encourage anybody to buy one of those ones. Uh, if you're at the point where you can, you know enough about saddles that you can go out and buy a brand new saddle, uh, you're probably not going to be looking at one of those. You're probably going to be looking at one somewhere in a couple thousand dollar range. For the most part, uh, even used to get a really good quality saddle, you're probably going to spend close to a thousand dollars and maybe more. Brand new saddles, in my opinion, like I said, my opinion, uh, brand new saddles, in order for it to be worth putting on your horse, you're probably going to spend a minimum of two thousand. Uh, you could easily spend up to five for a decent saddle. Uh, much beyond that, I think you're just wasting your money. Because uh, the saddle can only get so good. Although, like I said, it is possible. I have seen them advertised for up to ten thousand dollars, and I've even heard that you can spend up to fifteen. So, you know, don't waste your money. You don't need to spend that much. I don't think. Uh, you know, the, the 
like I said, I one saddle of my own. I, I'm going to guess brand new. It was probably a five six hundred dollar saddle. Uh, I only paid paid a couple hundred dollars for it used. Uh, you know, something like that is a good saddle to start with. Uh, the first couple of saddles that I had were, well, I didn't spend a lot on them, and it's probably a good thing because they weren't very good in many ways because they didn't fit the horse well. Uh, some of them weren't well made, different things like that, but they were learning experiences, let me tell you. Unfortunately, rather expensive ones in the long run. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe I could save you a little bit. Uh, talk to your friends that have had several saddles and have been riding for quite a few years. Get some opinions from them. Don't necessarily run out and buy what they got just because they say so. Uh, what you need might not be what they got, but you can still get some good information from them. You can get some suggestions. They might be able to narrow it down to two or three brands that you should be really looking at because they are known for their quality. Oh, one of my saddles that I've got, that particular brand. Actually, there's another one of that same make right over here. And they are a very good quality saddle. Uh, it's a company that's been in business for quite some time, still in business, and they are known for very comfortable and high-quality saddles. I know quite a few people that have owned them. Um, some that uh, <clears throat> their saddles are, I think the one was saying it was like 30, 40 years old. And they love that thing. You know, you get what you pay for in many cases, but uh, do your homework, learn a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm just throwing this stuff out there because uh, I know that uh, when you first go out to get a saddle, it can be very, very overwhelming. Uh, it's very hard to find information about saddles, and there's so much to know about saddles that you can very easily spend a large amount of money learning about saddles if you're not careful. So I'm hoping that possibly I'm going to save somebody a little bit of money out there by giving you a little bit of a heads up, some of the things you have to look out for, some of the features you may or may not want, different types of saddles that are available. Uh, I'm in Canada here, so uh, what I just showed you is uh, different styles of saddles that are readily available here. And uh, I only showed you one English saddle. There's actually a couple more of them around here. But I don't know enough. I don't know enough about English saddles to actually be able to show you the different types of English saddles and to tell one from another. I can barely tell the Western saddles one from another because there is so much overlapping in features on them from one to another that and I don't know. They call them different things, and sometimes I'm not sure if they truly are or not because there are so many features that. Like I said, they overlap from one to another, and if you order one new custom uh, to your liking with certain features on it, uh, you know, just because it's got a rounded skirt doesn't mean it's a certain type. Just because it's got a higher low back on it doesn't mean it's a certain type. Oh, one more thing I did not mention, I probably should mention. Uh, a lot of people like saddles that have a lot of very intricate designs in them. Um, to, what, what's referred to as tooling, because they're usually done by leather crafters with tools and uh, lots of fancy carving and that looks lovely but it is a nuisance to keep clean and uh, all the extra engraving causes the uh, you know dust dirt that sort of thing to stick to it we get trapped in it uh, my opinion on that stuff is the plainer and more boring that saddle looks the better it is it's not going to trap moisture, dirt, stuff like that. So uh, it's probably going to last longer. It's going to be easier to clean, take far less time to clean, and have to be cleaned far less often. And believe me, I don't know about you, but i got a lot better things to do with my time than cleaning my saddle. And I'll just show you on this one here, more or less where you will find it. Uh, this one doesn't have any on it, but usually down in the corners of the skirting at the front and the rear, and if possibly a few other places, maybe around behind the seat, uh, they will have what is called bling. And the bling is usually silver. Engraved silver pieces, thin you know, pieces that are attached to the saddle in various places, make it look a little more attractive, kind of like the, the fancy engraving on some of them. Uh, it looks nice, but it's one more thing to clean. Uh, one more thing to trap moisture and dirt and dust. And like I said, it's one of those things, you know, if you can keep your saddle 
and use your saddle in a fairly dust-free environment and you do a lot of public showing where something like that matters to you, well, okay, but it's going to cost you. You're going to pay for that, although, uh, well, at least for the bling anyhow. When it comes to the engraving, the tooling on the saddle, uh, that may or may not cost any more at all. Depending on the saddle, I've seen uh, several saddles where uh, you could get the heavily tooled or untooled versions, same price. So I, I'm not sure how that works, but uh, personally, I would prefer not to have it. One last thing to worry about. Uh, honestly, I think it would make your saddle last a little bit longer. This one Aussie saddle behind me, uh, it has a suede seat, and, the, and that is a feature you can get on quite a few saddles, uh, whether it's synthetic or leather. Uh, you can get what is uh, either artificial or either synthetic or true leather suede on the seat, and uh, that has pros and cons to it. If you spend many, many hours in the saddle, uh, I haven't experienced it yet, but I've heard that because of the extra roughness on it, it can actually wear out the seat of your pants. Well, that's the downside to it. Uh, another downside to it is it does not clean as well. It is also more likely if it gets wet, it's going to stay that way for a lot longer. Uh, can't be just wiped off like a smooth leather can. But one of the advantages to it is it you stick to it. There's both upsides and downsides to suede. Uh, my saddles, I have one that does have a suede seat, one that does not. Uh, personally, I don't know, notice much difference, but then again, the one that has a suede seat is the low back, so maybe that, you know, they kind of counteract each other, so I don't really notice the difference between the two, but those are things you can consider, you know, uh, you know, there's so many options in, you know, the shapes and styles of the saddles that, uh, my goodness, you got your work cut out for you. The rigging, I didn't even get into the rigging. Oh, that's another topic I think maybe I should cover too, because it's kind of important. This is something that uh, I didn't discuss, and you probably should know a little bit about. Uh, I've learned a little bit about it, uh, good and bad and ugly. and Well, there's just so many variations, and a lot of it is personal preference. Some people think one is better than the other, and uh, I'm not convinced on which ones are actually always the best because some can be good some can be bad the placement of it i don't think is very good but the type of it isn't really bad and uh, maybe a little bit better angle and underneath this part of the skirting what we got here is well this would be the rigging it's how your saddle is attached to the horse and let me tell you there are so many variations in this uh, most of them have got a D-ring. This one actually has just a ring. Well, that's their choice. Uh, the main uh, attachment is this piece of leather that goes up and attaches directly to the tree. It's, uh, well, in the case of this one, I believe it's nailed in. Uh, most of them are. Uh, this one also has a smaller strap that goes up to the back of the saddle and attaches to the tree somewhere up around the back and it holds this ring back a little bit further. Not sure why they bothered to do that. They could have accomplished the same thing simply by attaching that a little further back on the tree. Well, let's not get into that. I'm just showing you this is one of the variations. Uh, others will use a D-ring in here. And when I say a D-ring, it's because it's the shape of a D. And uh, my other saddle, it has D-rings on it. And on some of them, the, this piece, it could be leather or synthetic uh, and goes right up and attach it directly to the tree. That's my preference is the ones that actually attach directly to the tree. I think they're a little more secure, a little safer. Uh, other variations are, like I said, this device could be shaped differently. The top could be flat. It could actually be the shape of a D. Uh, some are actually adjustable. That's a feature you may want to consider, too, depending on the shape of your horse, because uh, where the cinch has to sit on the ho uh, go on the horse compared to where the saddle needs to sit is going to, well, that's one of your variables. And uh, also, uh, it's going to change how secure the saddle sits on the horse and where the saddle sits on the Oh, man, it's just, I could talk about this forever. 
Uh, one of the other, one of the things that you got to pay attention to is make sure because, you know, like I said, on this one, this is leather, and when you're buying a used saddle, you got to make sure that's not rotted. Now you'll notice how dusty this one is. This is what I'm talking about. See how heavily tooled this one is, and on cheaper saddles, it actually isn't tooled. It's stamped. It's put on with a press on a cheaper saddle. Uh, I'm not sure if this one's stamped or done by hand. Probably stamped, I think. Anyhow, um, a lot of them have uh, straps go directly up to the tree. Others will actually be attached. Uh, the D-ring will actually be attached to the skirt itself. And uh, I don't care for those ones as much because the leather can deteriorate and you don't know about it until all of a sudden that D-ring rips right out of the saddle and you got no cinch anymore. So I, I don't like those in particular, but if you do get one like that, I won't say don't use one. Go ahead. But if you get one like that, make sure that that area is really thick. The leather here on this one is not, I mean, it looks okay, but and for, for considering that's got to hold your uh, uh, saddle on your horse, this is not thick enough. I wouldn't, if I saw that with a D-ring attached to it, I'd walk away. Uh, you want something that is fairly substantial, and then you get, uh, I said one of the other variations is, uh, like this, similar to this one, I've seen somewhere they have uh, two fairly large straps, and the cinch actually is almost in the middle of the saddle, uh, quite a bit further back. You can also get ones that you can actually move the cinch to different positions. Uh, in the case of my other saddle right next to it, it actually has more than one D-ring on it, and you can use one, the other, or both. Uh, some actually have a little screw mechanism. You can slide it back just a tiny bit. You know, you can move it back and forth. But, uh, you know, that's something else you want to look at, though. You want to make sure that the attachments are good, make sure the rings are fairly robust, not flimsy little pieces of metal with welds in them that look like they're going to break, because uh, I did actually have once... Um, I'll see if I can find one here, because it's, it's something that's usually on a saddle. Now, this isn't the one. This one is actually a little better. But you can see in this one, there's a... Right here, there is actually a weld in it. That ring is, is welded. It's not all one piece. And I had one one time that was a fairly cheap one, and that ring that weld there it broke and uh, fortunately uh, I noticed it when I wasn't actually using it and I never used it again I think I threw that one out but that's just one of the you know like I said this is something that is usually on your saddle so you know when you buy it uh, unless you buy a cinch separately both of these saddles when I bought them I bought a brand new cinch for each one those are brand new cinches on both these saddles. Well, they're not brand new anymore, but uh, they were when I got the saddles. And uh, but you know, it's something you want to consider too: the overall condition of it. Uh, this one isn't too bad. I have another one that came with, uh, I believe it was that saddle uh, that uh, I don't know. It had been sitting on the floor or something. It was rather crusty. You could hardly even bend it that sort of thing. So uh, there's something else that when you buy a saddle, uh, make sure the cinch is in good condition. Uh, make sure this ring isn't broken. Make sure that the material, whatever it is, whether, you know, this is what's referred to as a mohair one. Uh, notice this one is also wider in the middle. This is what's called a roping style. It's intended to displace the pressure a little more because when, when you're roping, uh, it tends to get pulled on a lot more. So they like to do that. But uh, this is just mine. But some of them are, you know, uh, straight strips. Some of them have fleece padding on them, whatever. Regardless of what it's made out of, make sure that the attachments are all good. Make sure the rings are in good shape. Make sure the material isn't deteriorated. You know, uh, your life might depend on that stuff. So you want to make sure it's all in good shape. You know, same with the rigging on the saddle. You know, this is stuff you want to pay attention to when you buy a saddle. Is, uh, you know, how it's attached, how well it's attached. Uh, I mean, like I said, depending on your preference and what you want, there's a lot of different ways of attaching your cinch to a saddle. And, uh, you know, this is what you're seeing underneath. Uh, if you put the stirrup back down, uh, there we go. Not much room there. Oh, now it's all curled up. You know, you don't see that. That's all. Most of that stuff is hidden. Uh, on that one, you can't see it. You can't even see the D-rings unless you lift the saddle up. So there's a lot of variation there. But... Uh, like I said, you know, there's a lot of different ways that it can be attached. Uh, 
my personal preference. I like seeing the ones that are attached to the tree. I think that's a little better. However, if the leather on the skirting is well enough made, if it's thick and they have a you know another area around there of you know an extra layer in that area where the D ring's attached for reinforcement, that's probably okay too. Then, so that's just uh, just thought I'd throw that out at you. Uh, you know, not all saddles are created equal in that department either. Like I said, there's an awful lot of uh, variations in saddles. Uh, the length of them, the height of them, the width of them, the angles of the bars, uh, the gullet comes in different widths. Uh, one of the things that uh, nobody ever talks about, they talk about uh, the seat size and the width of the gullet uh, are the two dimensions that you're going to hear of the most. And uh, uh, according to one saddle maker, you cannot accurately measure the gullet width once the saddle is built because of all this extra material on here, it alters the width of your, you know, your reading, your measurement that you're going to take in this area. So you can't accurately measure. So if somebody says it's a seven and a half and you measure it and it's only a seven, well, maybe it is actually a seven and a half. Once you put that extra material on, it only measures a seven. Other problem is that I've found is a People measure them in different places, and if you even move up and down a half an inch, you know, that might change your reading by one inch because of the angle that these things are at. So uh, the best thing to do is take this sucker home, you know, use, get a used one, or go to a store that will allow you to take it home, try it on your horse, see if it fits. Because the one thing they never talk about is the angle that's uh, very rare. You're ever going to have anybody ever mention the angle. And that is critical to the fit on the horse. Now, this front part is deceiving. It looks like it's really straight up and down. This is just loose leather. There's no tree behind it. The tree starts back about here. So, it, you know, this part here will flex quite a bit. It's there more for looks than anything. I'm not really sure why they put this extra leather there on pretty much all saddles. But it's there, and it doesn't do a darn thing. But this angle, very important to the fit on the horse. It's also a measurement nobody's going to tell you. That is why you have to put the saddle on your horse to see if it works. Because they're not all made the same. They are made similar. And uh, the other thing that uh, you'll hear about is quarter, half, three quarter, full, quarter horse bars. I can't remember what the different ones there. I don't know. Mine are both full. That's all I know. But uh, that has nothing to do with the angle. That has to do with the length of them. Uh, the quarter or half or three-quarter basically is the length. Full ones are the ones that come down to full length, pretty much just about to here. You know, uh, the, the less, the shorter they are, uh, the less they're going to actually displace weight, which is one of the purposes of your saddle, is to displace weight, that, which is why you want a good fit, good contact. So your weight and the saddle weight is spread out over the horse's back as much as possible. Another one of the things you want to look for, like I said, take the saddle home, try it on your horse. Make sure it fits and spreads that weight out well. One of the most important things. So well, I hope I've been a little bit helpful, and hopefully I'm going to save you a little money, because if you make mistakes buying saddles and buy the wrong one for your needs, well, that can get very expensive and cost you literally thousands and thousands of dollars by the time you get the right saddle. So we're just going to talk about saddles, some of the features you can get, some of the different types of saddles. Like I said, uh, the ones that we have available here that I just showed you uh, was your Western saddles, your English saddle, uh, your Aussie saddles uh, that are not from Australia. Remember that one. I always find that one funny. They call them Aussie saddles. And they're made in North America. Uh, and uh, like I said, in each of those uh uh, like I said, the, the Aussie saddle, the buck roll, and the horn, both optional. Uh, English saddle, uh, I'm not sure what all is optional on them. Not a whole lot because I've never seen them with much. But they do come also in a number of different types. Uh, I've seen in catalogs. I, I don't know a lot about them, but I do know that there is uh, eventing and jumping and dressage and uh, sport and uh, I don't know. All these different kinds. I don't know what the differences are. I'm sure somebody that is well informed can uh, tell you. But uh, another thing I'll warn you too is uh, if uh, you are interested in an English saddle, one thing I discovered uh, recently, which I found rather surprising, was the fact that 
uh, in spite of the fact that you get a piece of leather the size of a postage stamp, those things are not cheap. Uh, the prices for decent English saddles are easily a couple of thousand dollars. So uh, regardless of what type of saddle you get, you might want to check it out and uh, see how it's constructed, see if it fits your horse well. Um, I've noticed, uh, even looking at the ones here, um, even the Aussie saddles have got the padding underneath is shaped differently than the one I had. Uh, the English saddles here are, uh, I've seen a couple of them, they're all different. Um, the Western saddles, my goodness, the number of different types and the features that you can get on them, um, absolutely mind-boggling, and they overlap so much you can't just take a look at a saddle and say by looking at it, this is a certain type of saddle because uh, there's so many optional features that you can get that normally dictate a certain type of saddle that, you well, know, anyhow, like I said, best option until you get to know them really well, which I don't. You best be looking at used ones and make sure you got a chance to borrow it, try it out, see if it actually fits your horse, and if it doesn't fit your horse well, don't buy it. Have a good day. Oh, and by the way, if you like any of the information that I provided in this video or any of my other videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't just subscribe. Hit the bell icon next to it and then click on all. That way you get notified every time there's a new video. Have a good day.